Hi, I'm Fraser Christian from the Coastal Survival School. I'd just like to welcome you to our woodland camp today. I want to do a video on how to correctly and safely identify wild garlic. It's one of the first plants that pops up in the wood after winter. And I want to show you a really quick and simple, easy recipe. We're going to make a wild garlic tortilla with potato and egg. It can be cooked nice and slowly on the fire and enjoyed hot or cold. It's a great dish, simple to make and a good way to introduce yourself to wild garlic. So let's pop off into the wood now and we'll go and find a lovely patch of wild garlic and show you to identify it. This is what I'm going to want to talk about. The wild garlic and the Lord and Ladies. I'm going to use my least dominant hand or the hand that I'm not going to eat with if I'm going to pick a plant that I'm unsure about or if it's poisonous. And this is the Lord and Ladies and although once it's in its mature stage it's quite different to the wild garlic and when we pick a plant I'm going to use one hand to hold the bottom of the stem and the other hand to pick it. That means I don't pull everything out of the ground. I'm going to pick every single leaf individually and that's where the problem can arise from because if you look at them they're obviously both different. But when they're smaller they're a lot harder to identify and what can happen is if you don't follow that rule about picking every single leaf individually okay when they're very young, the Lord and Ladies doesn't have that characteristic of that cut shape in the bottom of the leaf. Okay, and that's a young Lord and Lady. I'm going to go for a wild garlic roughly the same size. It was growing in exactly the same facility. Okay, and that's the wild garlic. Okay, so if you come along, and this is how I'm expecting most of the problems arise with poisoning and people poisoning themselves with wild garlic is the way that you could greedily or incorrectly pick it. And that would be a case of just grabbing whole handfuls, okay? And in that whole handful, it's gonna be quite easy to pick some Lord and Lady and wild garlic. So, the basic rule is, you hold the bottom of each stem, flower or leaf, and with the other hand, you pick. The spiritual way that we can engage with that is we say we're using one hand to give the energy, and we're taking with the other hand, which creates a complete circle. And whether you believe in stuff like that, that's up to you. What you need to know is how to forage this safely. So I'm gonna pick a lovely pat patch of this wild garlic here now. There's plenty of it along here. It's a great community, okay? So let's gather some wild garlic now, get back to the kitchen, and I'll show you how to make the tortilla. So we're back by the fire, in the warm again. The temperature's just starting to drop out there now as the sun dips away. Perfect time to make a nice hearty warm meal that as I say, once it cools it can be sliced up and you can take this on the trail with you. A wild garlic tortilla is a simple and easy dish. So we're gonna use a Dutch oven. I've just had this warming by the fire. So we get that on there now, start to get that preheated. We always generally preheat our pan. That's the first thing we do. And then we're gonna heat the cooking medium. Inside of there's a little drop of vegetable oil. So I'll pop that on. Next, we've got our ingredients, okay? We've got the wild garlic that we just collected, some eggs, a bit of sea salt, and a humble potato, okay? And this is the dish. Starting with the potato. What we wanna do is cut this up into tiny little dices, and this is where if we're going to put the concentration in, it's in chopping this up. If we have them in large, regular pieces, the dish isn't going to cook that evenly. We're going to end up with some hard bits, some overcooked pieces, and it's going to take ages to cook. And when we're using fire, wood is a precious resource. We want our food to cook as quickly as possible. It's not too bad on a cold day like today. It's quite enjoyable sitting by a warm fire. But as it gets starts to get hot in the summer months, we don't want to be burning loads of wood to keep warm, so we want to know how to cook our food as quickly as possible. And chopping the veg up is really important, get it nice and small. So I'm just going to start by slicing through, just to create really thin chips to begin with. I'm just angling the knife away from my fingers, there you can see. And then what we're going to do 
divide the potato in half, okay? And we've got all of the slices running that way now. And we're gonna chop it that way, so we're gonna make chips. And then when we cut it that way, it's gonna turn back into dice. So let's start by slicing it through into chips. Nice and carefully. Always angling the knife away from you and making sure that the knife is angled away from your fingers and your fingers and your thumb are right out of the way. It's important. You need to know how to adopt the correct way to use tools in a controlled and relaxed manner. And especially if you get a little bit tired or you're distracted, you'll never make clumsy mistakes. And I've seen plenty of people cut their fingers by having the hand or the thumb in front of it. Someone calls them, they turn around, they carry on cutting, you know, and an accident is definitely not what we want out in the woods. So let's make the chips. And we just turn the board round. So the chips are all running that way. We just pick the board up, turn it round, and start to cut through to make small dices. nice and carefully again. We do all the same job at the same time. Builds up muscle memory and makes the job more efficient. So the analogy we were taught when I was a chef, you've got a whole sack of onions to dice up. First of all, you peel all the onions, then you cut all the onions in half, then you start to dice the onions. Muscle memory builds up and your skills get a lot better. So check the lid of your pan's not hot okay we've got a veg oil in there getting nice and warm but not smoking pan's just nice and warm there's our diced vegetables and you can use parsnips or carrots to make this as well but potato is really good and there you can see lovely small dices let's pop those into the pan it's a good idea to use on a far nice heavy bottomed pan and something with a lid to make this dish. And if you cook with a lid as well, trapped all of the steam in there, okay? It's gonna cook the food from the top and the bottom. So potatoes go in there. We're just gonna give those three or four minutes and they can just soften down lovely while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. So next is the wild garlic. When we're chopping up fresh vegetables, we wanna cut them once and once only if possible, instead of keep chopping them up. So take all your leaves together in a nice bunch, okay? And then run the knife through, shaving off, and again, in really fine little slivers. This is only gonna go in for a few minutes. And there we go. It's what chefs call chiffonade, really fine shavings. And besides that, there's not much else prepped to do. That's only taken, what, one minute, if that. Okay, so let's check the potatoes. They've been in there now for two or three minutes. Still need softening up a little bit more. So we'll pop the pan lid back on there. Let's get the fire going a little bit more now. So we're just gonna move the ends of the sticks in. And you don't have to worry about chopping and sawing up loads of wood. What we're looking for is some nice, well-seasoned dead wood, especially if it's self-standing after the winter like this, the wood when it's been up on the tree. And when you break it, it's important that the bark snaps cleanly. If there's any moisture left in your wood, it creates lots of smoke and lots of steam. So we we'll keep feeding the long lengths of wood in rather than chopping everything up just, just to keep efficient. We just need to keep feeding the ends in. And as we feed the ends in, the sticks are already hot 
and half burnt so you're continually moving in half burnt wood and drier wood so we'll just give it a quick blow and get the fire back into life always be careful when you do that especially if your wood suddenly bursts into life so always keep your head nice and low never blown from the top of the fire and try and sit out of the smoke it's okay if you engage in cooking on the fire just maybe once or twice but when we lived by the fire our primitive ancestors smoke would have been a real problem it's something that i've noticed living by the fire now for years and i really find it very ir irritating even a small bit of smoke so always try and sit with the smoke flowing away from you it's really important so we'll leave those in there now for another two or three minutes then we'll add the garlic and the eggs right the fire's lovely and established now plenty of heat in there now and i can hear the potatoes sizzling that's loads of steam in there generating it's going to cook those and they literally need a few minutes at that temperature so let's have a little look at them now Make sure that pan lid's not hot, excuse my glove. There you go, see all the moisture coming off of there then. And they're just golden now. And where we had them in such little tiny diced pieces, it's literally gonna take a few minutes. So what we wanna do now is put in the wild garlic. And there you can see that's in there, nice and spread about. We're gonna stir it up anyway. In with a pinch of sea salt. Just give that a little stir now. Make sure none of it's stuck to the bottom of the pan. And that's all the wild garlic needs is just a little wilt. In with the eggs. There's both the eggs in, give them a lovely stir. No need to pre-whisk them, we don't need to make loads of washing up. And once we've got that lovely and mixed up, spread it out over the bottom of the pan. This is a bit of a large pan for just two portions of this, or one portion of this, whatever. Spread it over, pop your lid back on. And if your fire's going 10 to the dozen like it is now, and it's too hot, don't panic and try and fight with the fire. Easiest way to control the fire is just to move your pan away from the fire instead of having to panic with the fire and make if it's too much heat coming out. So always just take your pan back off, stay controlled, stay nice and relaxed. Big heavy Dutch oven like this, it's gonna be enough residual heat in there now just to cook that through. And that's literally gonna need one more minute of all that steam generator in there just to cook. So they've been sizzling in there now, that last bit of steam, last bit of residual heat, and that's just been one minute that's been sat in there now, and it should be perfect. So let's take the lid off now and serve some up. I don't know about you, but I'm really hungry. This cold's definitely getting to me today. It's always important when you're outside to keep the calories up. And my one thing I've learned over the years of being outside expeditioning, going off wild camping etc especially in the winter take twice as much food as you think you're going to need twice as much drinks as you think you're going to need okay you're right there you want to be constantly rehydrating and constantly eating anyway let's dive in last bit of steam's come off that now it's perfect as i say it's not going to be a big deep cake this one because it was only a little bit in the pan so let's take a little bit out now okay we just run the spoon through to cut it up and take a little bit out and there we go it's only thin this one okay you can call it a potato and wild garlic omelet if you want when i was in spain they used to call it tortilla and when i lived in the mountains in france we used to make this every morning for breakfast it's a cheap, easy dish. Eggs last a long time in the field. Potatoes last a long time in the field. So remember, 
when you're going out camping, you're going off doing your bushcraft stuff, and you want to know what food to take, don't have to take dehydrated rations with loads of preserved food. Think, vegetables are perfectly wrapped. They last for ages if they're kept well. Eggs last for ages. Buy those little plastic containers to take them with you and try and eat fresh food when you're out and about. And there it is. Anyway, the proof is in the pudding. I like a bit of salt, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on. And when you let this go cold, it really does set and go, turns into kind of like a cake. And again, it's delicious cold. Absolutely magnificent. The flavor, the freshness of the wild garlic just really compensates and complements really than compensates, sorry. Really complements the potato and the egg. Total simple dish, couple of minutes from start to finish. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Stay tuned, we're gonna be doing loads more simple cookery around the fire, showing you loads more wild food and how to easily get it down and cook simple dishes with it. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Fraser Christian. Stay tuned, happy eating.